There are over 10,000 mod packs available on Curse Forge alone. How will you ever know which packs are going to be worth your time? I've started the incredible task of completing each mod pack in a single video. This format may not be the best way to grow a YouTube channel, so if you do enjoy this kind of thing, please consider subscribing and sharing the video. And with all of that said, let's roll that intro. Today, we're going to be completing Techopolis 2 in a single video. We're going to be working our way through all of the tiers of Technium, scaling up our production until it completely destroys my FPS. We're going to automatically mine dozens of wars and send them off to the factory for processing. So remember to leave a like and share this video far and wide. Welcome my friends to Techopolis 2. And there's one more thing I haven't told you yet. It's a hex land. Hello. Well this is interesting. The world is broken up into hexagonal biomes. It's really quite surreal. We'll start off in the quest book, where we've got 24 quest chapters to work through, automating 7 different tiers of Technium ingots. Starting at Basic Technium, working all the way down to Final Technium. In this pack, there's a currency called Tech Bugs, which we're going to be able to use to buy ores and unlock research. Research requires us to hit technological milestones in order to craft the research paper. So many cool mods are gated behind research, so we're really encouraged to progress through the mod pack. So with a basic introduction done, we're going to be starting, of course, with basic technium. The first chapter is basic Minecraft things, so let's get that done real quick. Tree, planks, crafting table, pickaxe, broken, cobblestone, furnace, stone pickaxe, and much more cobblestone. That's because if we place down 27 furnaces in a 3x3 pattern, we'll get a jumbo furnace. Now we're gonna need more wood, so we can twig to speed up the growth of these saplings and use Ultimine to chop down the trees. Now the benefit of the jumbo furnace is it's got a bigger inventory, and later we're gonna be able to smelt more items in one go. Now you may notice that it's currently night time, but that's not a problem because no mobs can spawn. We're basically in survival peaceful. I might actually find a way to try and disable the night sequence at some point, as all it does is make the video dark for you. But anyways, let's see what next? We've got a bunch of quests complete so we can claim all of our tech buck rewards. Next we need to smelt down a stone pickaxe into a prospector's pickaxe. Then if we pop down some coloured stone that we got from mining and break it with our prospector's pick, we'll get some ore fragments. Coal and lapis at this point. We'll unlock more as we progress. Yeah, we're gonna need some more coloured stone so let's see what's down our mine. This'll do nicely. Oh yeah, that's a lot of fragments. We can use those to make a big bunch of lapis lazuli ores. And and the same with the coal fragments. Now let me get some more logs. I've got more logs. We can use some sticks and planks to make a tier 1 support frame, a wooden pickaxe, our first of very many miners, but this one we're going to use to make a structure placer. Right, let me clear up some space and we can set up our first automated miner. Alright, lots of stone smelted and lots of space cleared out. Now if you smelt down 27 furnaces, you get a jumbo furnace item, which we can place into the upgrade slot, which two of these lets us now smelt three items at a time. I've also made up a bunch of these auto miners because because yeah, we're going to need a lot. Now then, we can use some of that stone to craft up a bunch of tier 2 support frames. And with our structure placer, we're going to select the minor frame, select a spot and right click to place the frames down. Then leaving a one block gap, we're going to place down another one. That way we can save ourselves a few frames using this tileable design. Now we need to build a 3x3x4 of lapis. Then on top in the center, we're going to place down a miner. With for now, we'll just put a chest on top. Very slowly, this will start to generate lapis ores for us. Currently we're going to get one every 220 ticks or every 11 seconds. That's where speed caps come into play, where we can reduce that time significantly. Currently we only really have access to fence posts so let's pop these on the corners. Uh buddy please? That's not a flower. Got it. And now we generate every 200 ticks or every 10 seconds instead. Now let's pop down our coal ore and some cobblestone. Ouch! This is the premise going forward, however we're going to want multiple miners for each type of resource to really overgenerate things. Don't worry, I hear you asking, Hopple, why do we even want these ores? Well for coal, if we smelt three of those down, we will get one piece of regular coal in return. 
Not a great ratio, but it's kind of all we have unlocked right now. So that's the basic tech chapter complete. Now let's move on to coal and lapis, where we're gonna need conveyor belts. They're gonna need some smooth stone slabs, and sadly we cannot auto mine smooth stone. Though we can mine regular stone, so that may help. And while we wait for smooth stone, let's take a look at copper and tin. We're gonna need some blocks of coal. That's gonna let us make our first research paper. That needs a blank research paper, which needs paper, which needs sugarcane. I guess we're gonna find that out in the world somewhere? Never mind, it's a quest reward for getting a lapis block. Nice. We've actually got an ocean in the hexagon next to us, so we'll just plant down our cane in here for now. Ooh, a shipwreck. We can't not go take a look, right? Bamboo and potatoes, a little iron, a little gold, and an emerald. Nice. All right, we can make up some belts, and let me show you how these work. Where we have an inventory, if we use an extracting belt on it, it's going to start to withdraw items. We can then direct those items around using regular belts. When they face into an inventory, they will then insert the item into it if it can. We just happen to have some chests on our miners, and we can move items from them into a jumbo furnace for auto smelting. The only thing I need to work out is how to auto fuel said jumbo furnace. Me thinks that's a problem for future hobble. Next we can use the structure placer to pop down the frame for a tree absorber. Then using the techopolis book we can visualize the tree that goes in the center. Editor hobble here, the structure placer has the option to place down the tree for you. Please do that. This was so difficult to do by hand. Then finally we can pop a barrel underneath. We haven't researched the storage drawers yet so this is gonna have to do. We can finally craft up the first blank research paper, craft that into the copper and tin papers, and we can submit that to the quest. Now in all's are us, I'm actually gonna disable the coal and lapis drops, as we really don't need any more of those fragments. Now when breaking coloured stone, we get copper and tin fragments. Nice! We can turn those into ore blocks and set up a couple more miners. We're gonna need a bit more space. So I have been hard at work clearing enough space for all of our activities to come. So let me do a nice smooth spin around and you can see that I have removed a ton of material to give us a ton of flat land. I've also set up a few miners to share with you what my plan is going to be going forward. Over here I've attempted to try and automate bronze, which is 3 copper and 1 tin ingot in the jumbo furnace. It's not going well, but that's because we're using primitive technology. Later on we're going to have access to laser IO and Xnet, which is where we're likely going to rip everything down that we've built and build it back properly. However, that requires elite technium, so we are nowhere near that point yet. So in order to make bronze, we needed three copper ingots and one tin. So that's what we've got going into this jumbo furnace right here. If we have a look behind this furnace, we've got another jumbo furnace. This one's receiving the copper and the tin ores. When it comes to insert and extract, it acts a lot like a regular furnace. We put our ores into the top and we extract from the bottom. We've got it going into a chest and extract it to go in the top of the next furnace. Let's jump into free camp so I can show you the rest. The copper and tin ingots go into this dropping conveyor belt and is put into the wooden hoppers. Over here it's the same for our ores and they are being fed by all of our miners. We've got one tin miner and three copper miners. Since it's a 1 to 3 recipe I figured it might help with the balancing. Now every single jumbo furnace that we use is going to need a fuel source. Coal seemed like the obvious choice so over here we've got a furnace melting down some coal ore. Which is then fed around into each of our furnaces including itself. As for coal miners, I have put down a lot. 16 for now. We are going to need thousands of coal for my plans, so making this expandable is a must. Since we have a lot of coal ore to smelt, I've crafted up 14 jumbo furnaces so we can smelt 15 crafts at a time. We're now also using tin blocks as our capstones, which gives us a coal every 140 ticks, or every 7 seconds. Let's progress. We can take some sticks and bronze and craft up an engineer's hammer. So in the basic technium quest chapter, we next need to make up some grout. It's sand, gravel and a clay block. 
Much like Tinker's, there's plenty of sand from clearing out the factory space, and clay is auto mineable, so let's pop one up here with some copper support frames. Again, we're going to use tin capstones as that is the best that we have. Now I just need to get into the mines and see if I can find a bunch of wild gravel hanging about looking for a job to do. Ooh, I think we can find clay in this biome, right? We can. And there's some gravel. Let's fill the inventory and see about making some grout. Sand, gravel, clay. I am grout. And we can send this through the jumbo furnace. Now while we wait, let me tell you about Trotter's independent towers. Why on earth do all of the wild horses want to climb up our tree tower? We have got 7 horses up here, we'll have to investigate this later. For now let's set up a miner for this grout though I'm not really sure if we're going to need a ton of it going forward. It's melted into grout dust which we can craft with bricks into coke bricks. We can build these into a 3x3x3, right click in the center with our engineer's hammer and boom, we have a coke oven. Very slowly it's going to turn our lovely coke into coal coke and some annoying creosote oil. I'm curious, can we hop her out of the coke oven? We can. That could be interesting for automation. It's just the creosote oil. Once this fills up, everything's going to stop working. But now we could just use buckets to pull it out and craft it with some planks into some treated wood. Anyways, let's grab some that coal coke and craft up a basic crafting table. And if we craft that with some hoppers, we'll get an automatic crafting table. As its name implies, it's going to allow us to do some basic auto crafting. Let's disable auto crafting, put a log into the table and save that recipe. Then whenever we put a log in, it'll automatically make planks for us. I think I'm probably going to set one up to make miners because right now I am doing it via two crafting tables. One to make a bunch of wooden pickaxes and the second for the miners. Next we can make up an advanced crafting table. And of course we want the auto version. We'll pop down a chest with a hopper going into it, on top of that we'll put on our advanced auto table and a chest on top of that. Now anything for the selected recipe that goes into this top chest will auto input into the table. And this table has a much larger crafting crib for much larger crafts. So let's see what we need to automate for the basic technium. We need 4 smooth stone, 4 clay blocks, 4 treated wooden planks, 4 coal coke, 8 bronze ingots and a lapis. We can make some of it by hand for now. We can teach the recipe dumping the remaining ingredients into the chest and we have a manual production of basic technium. Nice. 3. Basic Technium This is going to be interesting to try and automate, that is for sure. Next, we're going to move over to iron and aluminum. Let's craft up a research paper for it, send it to the craft book, and now we have to break coloured stone for iron and aluminum fragments. Much of the same again when we craft up iron ore and aluminum ore, which requires a tier 4 support frame. So let me get that done real quick and I will try and use our coal miners to fuel them. Hold your horses! I just remembered that we can now start to unlock things with our basic technium. But real quick, let me show you this jerry can. It holds 10 buckets of creosote oil, so we can put a few in and make the cold coke for much longer. We can even throw it into this auto crafter and it'll automatically make 10 lots of treated planks. It saves on the micromanaging. We're up to 32 basic technium, so it's time to go on a shopping spree. We'll make the compressed research papers and ooh! Looks like it also costs tech bucks to unlock. But now we can craft up two times compressed cobblestone, which we're going to use for our next paper. We can use four of them to make these storage drawers research paper. We now have the knowledge of how to craft storage drawers. Very handy. So instead of using a chest on our miners, we could now use a drawer if we wanted to. It can now hold 2048 cobblestone, but that is upgradable with upgrades. Anyway, I've manually smelted up some aluminum and there's some iron in here to smelt too. That's because I would like to quickly craft craft up some blast bricks. And let's see, can I remember how to build the blast furnace? I can! Nice! We can put in some coal coke and some iron and very slowly it gives us access to steel. We can turn 36 steel into 4 steel blocks and craft up the redstone research papers. Send it to the quest book again, we'll get fragments from coloured stone, blah blah blah. It's getting quite repetitive. 3 redstone ore equals 1 redstone dust. That's unlocked little logistics, which it's quite a cool train minecart mod, but I don't think I'll be using it as by the time that we've set this up, we'd not really need it anymore. More importantly, it has unlocked 
big machines, and we can unlock the metal press from immersive engineering. But I think now it's time for me to go and actually set up the miners for all of the ores that we've missed. Let me see what I can hobble together. This is what I've hobbled together. I've copied the exact same ore layout as our coal, where we've got rows of the same ore. That means that we can easily scale up production by just making it longer. We're now using aluminum blocks as our capstone, reducing it down to 100 ticks or 5 seconds. In terms of coal, we have got a loopback overflow system in place where we pull out of this chest, send it over to the hoppers for any jumbo furnace in this line, and any overflow go back down to this chest. So that is the redstone smelter set up. And if you right click some glass onto a belt, it'll prevent you from picking up anything on that belt super handy feature. Yeah, don't walk on diagonal belts. You'll fall in and you will get stuck. Research papers for construction ones. Send and send. Now we can make construction ones which will allow me to place down a bunch of blocks in one click. We'll start by placing down nine stone as a base. Then we can just want the rest into position. Nice. Now I'm going to get some work done. Here's where I'm up to. We've got smooth stone in which is kind of scary and we also have lapis. Now smooth stone is a one to one ratio recipe and it fills up very fast. When a jumbo furnace gets full it starts spewing items all over the floor. Yeah that's scary. So I think obsidian is going to be high on our to-do list since we're going to need void upgrades as soon as possible. Over here is where we're mining our no processing ores like sand and clay and I'm about to quickly put in the gravel miner. We've also changed again to using redstone capstones because one it's much cheaper and two it takes us down to 90 ticks. So then what do we actually need to progress? Well we need to make the research paper for the metal press. That's the papers and let's send this off. Oh lovely it gives us the materials to actually build one. However we have a slight problem the metal press is going to require some power and well we have none. So next we must work our way through this line here to start generating power. I always tend to go for the water wheel so this time we're going to make windmills. It's going to require a ton of industrial hemp which is why Smarty Pants Hobble has set up this simple field here. You just hold down left click and spam crouch to regrow them. Oh and if you're curious, this is how well Trotter's Independent Towers is doing. We've still got 6 horses chilling and they told me to ask you something. Do you want to get earlier access to videos before they go live on YouTube? If so, please consider becoming a channel member down below. Now let me see if I can remember how to build a metal press. Looks like I don't. Whoopsies. There it is. Lovely. I'm gonna pop a hopper on this side and a chest on this side. On the top we need to put down an LV connector and now we need to build a windmill. A temporary one for now will do perfectly. And boom, we should have some power. Now we need a plate mold which is nice and easy, just 8 steel ingots. We can just slide it into here and we're ready to make plates. So now we just need iron plates. Oh dear, we're losing power. Turns out one windmill is not enough to power this. Not to worry, we can pop down the second one. Connector on the top however we're going to need to connect it to a relay. So now we're going to pop it down here and then we can connect that to the metal press. Okay so it looks like we're going to be generating a very small excess of power. So this is fully powered. So next let's craft up the engineer's blueprint and some wire cutters. We can craft up a gear mold, wire mold and a rod mold. Quests complete. So who's up for an adventure? Let's go find some lava. Oh that's a rich village. They have their very own oil well. Oh and if you're curious, villager trading needs to be researched before it works. Let's keep going. Lava pool. Thank you very much for the forbidden sippy drink. On the way home, I've come across a meteorite. And yes, we have some obsidian. Amazing, that's a few void upgrades right there. Ooh, tech bucks in the middle chest is huge. All right, that's enough exploring. Let me get home with great haste. So I had to do two trips but 36 lava in total and on top we've got a fluid absorber. Built exactly like our miners except this one generates a little bit of lava. Well once we get some kind of tank it will. Right now it's doing nothing. Meanwhile I went ahead and set up an improved blast furnace. As moving forward I think we're going to need a bunch of steel. All I do is throw in some iron blocks and it'll do the rest for me. I know I said I'm not doing little logistics but let's make up the research papers. That's because we're going to need access to rapid pit hoppers which are hoppers but fast but more importantly we can make the fluid hopper which i think is how we're going to get our lava generation yes we're generating lava so let's see about building this bottling machine 
And yeah, that worked. We'll be using this a lot, I think. Again, we can hop it into one side and I'll go and get a chest for the other side in a moment. But we'll use this as part of our automation chain for making advanced technium. And I think it's time that we go on a research shopping spree. Up first, let's grab a nickel research paper. Then we'll grab a waystone research. Then let's get some iron chest research underway. And finally, let's grab the trash can research. Two nickel and one iron is going to give us invar, which we're going to need for advanced technium. Just need to make up the alloy kill. This one is a 2x2 two two build and yay progression. What do you say we tear down a mountain? I kinda need more space. And just like that, my friends, the mountain has been defeated. Ultimine makes it so much more bearable. Now I can set up a proper system for making bronze. So in the space we just cleared, I've set up a bunch more minor frames. Still doing a 3 to 1 ratio. I'll set this up shortly, but watch this. As I walk over this chunk boundary, the game freezes. And then it's fine again. It's slowly getting worse. Sorry for unloading that on you, it's just really frustrating when it freezes. Anyway, let me show you how to move around lava. So we've got our fluid absorber, and on top of that I've placed a fluid pump. Remember to give the pump a redstone signal, it pumps into some fluid pipe, and into our fluid hopper, and into our bottling machine. The reason I'm still using the fluid hopper is so we can manually pull out lava buckets when we need them. So all we do is throw a ton of glass bottles into this chest, they'll get filled with lava, we have lava bottles. Nice! I think that's the last thing that we needed to manually make some advanced technium. Let's save the recipe and my friends, we have advanced technium. Not much since it is 4 steel gears each or 16 steel ingots. Kind of expensive with our current technology. And much like basic technium, I'm not going to automate this until we have much better tech like Xnet unlocked. But for now we have 16 advanced technium. Let's go ahead and set some more steel gears to craft up too. Up next we're going to be working towards elite technium. Silver and gold is the first on our list to research. That's the papers made. While we're at it let's research simple storage networks and send that one off as well. Researching no hunger? Advancing the human evolution one book at a time. That means that we're never going to need to eat again. We will always have full saturation. Amazing. Alrighty then, silver and gold time. Oh, it looks like I need to fill in another hexagon in order to put down the miners. Please hold. Well, I've encountered a little bit of an issue. You see, I think we're kind of at the point now where we're overdoing it with conveyor belts. To be fair, I knew this day was coming. As you can see in this current setup below me, we've got a throughput issue. We're not able to move the items fast enough. I've got a plan though. We just unlocked the simple storage network, which has importing and exporting functionality. For currently four bronze, we've got three rows of copper and one row of tin. And the idea is to combat the three to one recipe so everything balances out. It does doesn't. So very soon we'll change all of this around to simple storage networks and hope for the best. We're going to need a storage network route, a ton of link cable, even more network cable, likely some filter link cables, and yes, import and export cables too. I want a storage request table. Let me get some bits together. I've got some bits together. So temporarily we'll pop our network route down here with a request table on top. How this is going to work is we'll run some network cable over to chests, we'll put a link cable on those chests, and we can then act access all of those chests from our request table. Oh my friends, no more looking through chests for me. We can craft directly in here with items from storage. I love it. The idea now is that we can hook up every inventory and chest to this terminal. Now this is absolutely unacceptable behavior, but quickly run a cable above ground. I just want to show you the benefit of what we have just unlocked. Smoothstone? 
Link cable, redstone, link cable. Then back in our terminal, we've got access to 29,000 redstone and 8,000 smooth stone. We need this hooked up to every ingot and more. Imagine we need lava bottles in this chest. We've got some in the system. All we need to do is use an export cable, tell it to export lava bottles and boom, we have them. The final piece of automating technium is this drawer controller from the store. Also a drawer key so we can actually lock the drawers. Above our crafting tables we'll pop down the drawer controller and attached to that we'll pop down some 2x2 drawers. Making sure to lock them, we can now put in all of the items that are required to make technium like lava bottles. Much like in the chest, it's going to auto fill in the crafter. The benefit of drawers is each item has its own slot, plus we can export directly to the drawer controller. We're now at a point where we could fully automate basic technium. We can't really do advanced yet due to invar and there's no way to automate the alloy kiln. So let's progress with researching thermal series. Send that off and now we have a lot of work to do. Let's make up some machine frames, some redstone flux coils and our first of many many induction smelters. We can use this in place of the alloy kiln so advanced technium is now doable. Alright this is hurting my soul. Let me go and tidy up this cable in real quick. So I've got bronze almost set up completely with simple storage networks. I've not done the miners yet as these exporters are incredibly slow by default. 4 items per second and we're going to be generating a lot more than that. This is where these stack upgrades come in. That needs aluminum dust and while we could set up this crusher it'll be much easier and quieter to use the pulverizer. So now we can throw in aluminum and after some time start to make some stack upgrades. Let's try it with a coal first and oh yes that is so much better. 64 per second. That was actually worth the effort. For the bronze making furnace I am using a stock upgrade which in theory should only allow a few of each ingot into the furnace. A few instances of 3 copper and 1 tin. Oh and if you're curious the wireless remote for simple storage networks has been disabled so sadly we must keep returning to the terminal and honestly I have no idea why. Alright let's turn on bronze and hope for the best shall we? We can fix the stock upgrade now and say 3 stacks of copper and 1 stack of tin please. It's working right now but I'm gonna have to check on it later just to make sure. Now we can start our research for lead, get a bunch of fragments and go set up a miner. So I went ahead and set up a bunch more windmills to get us through the next chapter. We're also now using MV wires to avoid any throughput issues. They're all fed into this bottom accumulator and trickle up to the top ready for using our machines. This is basically just a big battery buffer. I've set up a wall of storage drawers for all of our bulk items and I've upgraded us to using the iron chest mod. Everything is connected to simple storage so we're almost ready to progress once again. But a quick overview, this is where we're at. One big hobbled together mess, but things are going really well so let's change that. The first thing we're going to do is craft up the research for nitre. That'll give us the option to then be able to purchase some nitre ore. We can then set up a miner, yada yada yada, and we can throw some nitre into the crystallizer with some liquid glass, which we get from putting glass into the magma crucible. But that'll give us a crystal base. Then after force feeding the crystallizer a bunch of water, we can throw them in again and oh dear this is painfully slow. But eventually we'll get some prismarine shards. That is essentially all of thermal complete. And we can try and move on to the crystals chapter. As always it starts with a research paper, coloured stone, yes yes yes, and they'll give us crystalline. Currently we're getting a 6 to 1 ratio using a jumbo smelter. If we send it to a pulverizer, we would get a 1 to 1 ratio. And it is going to be the same for most of our ores. So when we redesign the base it is going to generate thousands of items items every minute probably, but now things get annoying. We can start by pulverizing some crystalline into crystalline dust. With this dust we need to mix it with a crystal base and a redstone in our induction smelter to get a ruby dust, and a lapis dust to get a sapphire dust, and a prismarine dust to get a peridot dust. We'll crystallize those with liquid glass to get rubies, sapphires and peridots, which when combined will make one amethyst shard. Ouch. And four amethyst shards will make one elite technium. Ouch. The ones we have for elite technium will be able to buy gem ores so we don't need to suffer for too long. But that can wait whereas the void upgrades cannot. I do not want any spillages so let's go see if we can capture ourselves some wild obsidian. It'll be nice to get out of the base for a bit.
So I found a meteor covered in cryodim obsidian, but I also see regular obsidian, so let's clear this up. At least 64 obsidian here, nice, and 15 tech bucks in the chest too. Nice, nice. That's gonna be enough obsidian for now. And thinking about it, I think I already grabbed obsidian earlier and just misplaced it. Eh, I guess I'll meet you back at home. It was at that moment, a modded Minecrafter's worst nightmare came true. No, you're not going mad. I do indeed have the exact same inventory that I had before we started that adventure. My adventure lasted for 1 hour and 37 minutes. When arriving back at the base, the second that our machines were loaded, the game crashed. Every time I attempted to reconnect, the game would hang and then ultimately crash again. So I've had to restore a backup and thank goodness they were working. Long story short, I don't think that we can ever leave the base again. Something that I've built here breaks once you reload the area. We could try uncloading the whole base but I'm not going to test it right now as I've had enough crashes for one day. We can just use the blast chiller with lava to get obsidian anyway. Oh dear I need to redo the prismarine crafting that I just did. Oh dearie me. I'm gonna get a cup of tea and try and work out what progress I lost. I'll see you soon. Okay, so I think I've caught up to where I should be. I've gone ahead and finished up the crafting of the amethyst shards. Very expensive craft. We also now have automated coal coke in the only way that we can really do it. We've got the fluid pumps on top and primarily the creosote is being sent over to this bottling machine where it's making treated wooden planks. Now this fluid pipe is extra long because we don't want to back up on creosote oil as we need coal coke. And at the end we have a fluid trash can. I have no idea if it operates on a nearest first basis, but it's holding steady right now. But we have coal coke being made, but we have none in stock. That's because I have hooked up basic technium. And as you can see here, it's our limiting factor. The sooner we can get the pyrolyzer unlocked, the better. For that, we're gonna need nether bricks, which unfortunately needs netherrack, which we have some from our initial exploring, but not much. We also need a blaze rod, which oddly we can get from metal pressing five blaze powder. And oh, that's cool just pulverizing redstone coils. But anyway, that's basic technium automated. But advanced technium needs a ton of steel, so we're not quite ready for that yet. Now that we have these amethyst shards, we should be just about ready to try and make some elite technium. Let's go. I think it would be wise to make sure that we use a storage downgrade here to only store one stack of each item. But my friends, we have Elite Technium. I feel like automating that later is going to be a nightmare. But we have new research available. Like Xnet, that was mentioned earlier, I think we should first research gem ores to save my sanity. That's the research paper and now we can pick which ore we want to buy. Ruby to begin with and now I'm out of tech bucks. Whoopsies, I guess we can spare some basic technium and make some more. Now let's grab Sapphire and let's grab Peridot. Then let's submit our our research for Xnet and pay the price and my friends this is a huge moment. Let me quickly go set up these gem miners. So Xnet is really good at moving items, energy and liquid around. I've set up an example here so I don't need to explain it as I go. In our controller we're gonna set up an item channel. Now we need to set up some connectors. We'll have one on the left chest and one on the right and one on the controller. We then hook them all together with a cable. On the left connector we'll name it one and the right is two just for demonstration. Demonstration. In the controller, we can now hover over each chest to see its name. In chest number one, I'm going to put in some miners to represent the ore that we're mining. And we want them moved over to chest number two, our jumbo furnace or pulverizer. We'll say on chest one in our item channel, we'll click to create and set it to extract the stack. On chest two, we'll click create and by default it's on insert. And before you can blink your eyes, all of those miners have been moved over to chest two. We can even filter it. On our insert, we can throw in our miners. Now, no matter what goes into chest number one, only miners are moved. That means that we can have dedicated machines for each ore, which is what we've got going on over here. This is all one network, but we've got filtered inserters for each ore and machine. The only downside to Xnet is the controller very quickly becomes very full. But let's craft up some ruby blocks and we can now research diamonds and emeralds. I kind of wish this bit wasn't so repetitive. Every new ore is just break colored stone and, you know, set up a miner from fragments. Yay. But here we go, we've got some diamonds. From our very first adventure, we had some netherrack, so let's turn that into nether bricks so we can make a pyrolyzer. Yay, four of them. We'll pop it down and it's exactly the same as the coke oven. We put the coal in and it'll export the coal coke and creosote oil. 
help, this can be sped up and it is so much smaller. We can also auto input and output which is very nice. Right Tio, time to go set up those diamond and emerald miners. Well, I'm in the middle of setting this up and I've realized that this is something that's going to make this so much easier if we research the angel ring. It's going to cost us 4 elite technium for the diamond ring and 2 more for the angel ring, it's worth it. It goes into one of our curio slots and my friends, we can fly. Now if you lock your eyes into the bottom of the screen, you'll see that slowly it is consuming our experience. It's a small price to pay and experience is very easy. We just sit at a jumbo furnace and try and pull out a smelted item and yes, from 42 to 57. And we've got a lot of furnaces. But anyways, back to work I go. Coal has now been upgraded to using pulverizers and exner and oh boy, it is producing. Though after clearing the backlog, this is far too much many pulverizers. In order to be able to run this many pulverizers, we needed power. Lots of power. So let me introduce these sterling dynamos. They consume a little bit of coal, they give a little power. It's a nice and balanced relationship. We're now using the induction smelters to make rubies, sapphires and peridots from their ores. We'll need those for the amethyst shards for elite technium. No augments in them yet though as they're still using the old power grid system. Here we've got the emerald and diamond ore from earlier and we've got osmium. Because mechanism, oh dear is on its way. Also this is an 8 to 1 ratio which is mega sad times. Now I don't really tend to include much mechanism in my videos because it's not really a mod that I enjoy much anymore. It's a really cool mod don't get me wrong, I feel like I've just been a bit overexposed to it at this point because for a while it was in every single mod pack. I'm going to show you the basics of how to do the processing but the rest is probably going to happen between clips and I'll explain a little bit after. So let's unlock mechanism. Yay! Mechanism. We'll start with a metallurgic infuser, like so. We're exporting redstone to the top and osmium to the back. And we've got our side config set up like so. That's making basic control circuits for us. To make infused alloy, we'll need another metallurgic infuser with more redstone and infused crystalline, which we'll make in an induction smelter. So real quick, let me hobble something together. I've hobbled it together. The bare minimum of what mechanism was required of us. We are not going to do more if we do not have to. We start out with our infuser making the basic circuits, it spits them into a drawer and we're connected with simple storage. The same then for our infused alloy, then we've got an enrichment chamber which enriches diamonds and pushes it into another infuser to make reinforced alloy. Over here we're making the infused crystalline, we start with a pulverizer making crystalline dust which pushes into the induction smelter with emeralds and diamonds. Then over here is the most annoying one, we've got an infuser turning enriched diamond and obsidian dust into an enriched obsidian. We're making enriched diamonds on site above with another enrichment chamber. To the left we're enriching obsidian to get our obsidian dust, though I've still not automated obsidian yet. That's because we can now auto mine it with a diamond support frame. But finally the refined obsidian is pushed into yet another infuser with reinforced alloy to make atomic alloy. I've got a downgrade in this drawer as I want to be able to back up on the previous tiers of alloy. Again these have their own power supply but soon we're going to get into the power mod and flux now networks. We can start by researching uranium and send that off for peer review. And you guessed it, uranium fragments. Four blocks of uranium lets us research power. And having gone through the recipes, none of it is going to require any technium. Amazing. It's just a whole bunch of micro crafting. Please hold. So putting uranium into the energizing orb is going to give us uraninite. And to begin with, this is incredibly slow and tedious. But in order to upgrade, we sadly need quartz, which we just don't have access to right now. But with four uraninite, we can make up four starter reactor blocks. We need 36 of these for a reactor. But with that, we now have the ability to manually craft ultimate technium. We have infused crystalline, uranium sheet metal, dielectric paste, and atomic alloy. So let's pop them in, and we have four ultimate technium. Nice. Now things get interesting. First things first, we can research refined storage, which is a game changer for automation. And it looks like we can just outright buy the processor binding, which is incredibly useful. But more importantly, we can now buy quartz ore, which we're going to use for refined storage, but also upgrading our power setup. I think it's time that we also unlock laser IO to help us with automating that energizing orb. 
and we're up to 7,000 basic technium at this point, and our bottleneck is now treated wood. I think we're going to need a lot more bottling machines moving forward. Ouchies. These raw logic processors require elite technium. At least you can get 12 at a time. All right, we are in credit. Ah, hang on, just this is this is this is incredibly frustrating thankfully now that we have refined storage it's almost time to rip down everything that we have built and build it back properly like i always do we are just missing one thing but first behind me you'll see that i have worked all the way up to the emerald reactor and quickly let me show you how to set up laser io we've got a node between a chest and our energizing orb and we only need four item cards two in the side of our energizing orb and two for our chest the important card is facing our energizing orb. Where in our extract card, we've got a filter to say only pull out the finished products. On the insert card, we 100% need this counting filter. This will make sure that it only puts in a certain amount of items at a time. This stops it from overloading. We've now got the miners and processing set up for quartz, ender ore, and uranium. And down on the end, our obsidian. And I'm in the middle of setting up glowstone. Thankfully, the recipe is just ultimate technium surrounded by lava bottles. So, real quick let's dive into some flux networks we need flux dust and that needs us to find some bedrock so let's grab some redstone and let's dig to the bottom of the world it's very dark and i'm hoping i can fix this in post but we'll put obsidian one block above the bedrock throw a bunch of redstone into the gap and then punch the obsidian to make flux dust we'll repeat this a few times we can craft up a flux plug, which goes on top of our reactor, which if you're curious generates 61,000 every per tick. We'll also need a ton of flux points and one flux controller. We'll create a new network and connect our controller to it, and our flux plug, and any flux point that we put down. So anyway, now that we need power, we can put down a flux point, and it'll wirelessly send the power there. It is so handy. The power mod can also do this, but it's a little bit more involved. Let's use our last ultimate a technium to craft a compressed netherrack. We can then downcraft that to a normal netherrack. But it looks like in order to auto mine the netherrack, we're gonna need a netherite support frame. That's gonna have to wait as I can't put this off any longer. I think it is time to finally rearrange the entire base. Before I go, take a look at the mess that's just been hobbled together. It is functional, but extremely inefficient. We are using a ton of mods to do all of the same job. And ideally, we want all of our processing done in a single area. Now let's quickly do a swoop under of all of the belts that we no longer need. Looks kind of cool. And let's cut away to a blank canvas. Quick interlude before we cut to the new fancy base shots, let's play a game. You see, the jumbo furnaces have a lot of experience stored into them. I've got 92 levels on me right now. Take a guess what my level's gonna be once we've picked them all up. 213. That's a lot of levels. We can sure do a lot of flying around now. Some of you who are keen-eyed may have noticed in my previous clips that some of these areas have got red X's on them. That's kind of a marker for myself which is going to be which hexagon is going to be cleared out. This time I'm going to do it the easy way with the destruction gadget, as using pickaxes is kind of painful. It's quite simple, just right click to delete the blocks. This is so much easier. And just like that, the hexagon is clear. It just needs a little bit of tidying up. So here we go. Bland aerial footage of what was left of our initial base and a lovely film dissolved to our new base where things are so dang tidy and organized. We've got miners, we've got processors, we've got everything that we should need to be able to progress to the next tier of Technium and beyond. Trotter's independent tower is still standing tall with three neighbors still living on top. We've got so many pulverizers and induction smelters to process all of the ores from our miners. But as we gently brush across the wheat fields, we'll find a wild hobble in his natural habitat. Welcome back my friends. Don't you just hate it that when you're playing a tech based mod pack and you accidentally build a farmhouse? Whoopsies. We are basically back to the point now where we left off previously. We just need to finalize the production of techniums. We've done away with Xnet and conveyor belts and we are now just fully using refined storage. I also spent a ton of time waiting for these Enderian blocks to be made. That's because now we produce an ore every single second. I think in total I've flattened out seven surrounding 
hexagons, mostly because some of them were just ruining my view. Inside the barn we've got our chips tables, some personal processing and all of our refined storage things. And refined storage is hooked up to absolutely everything. Over here we've dedicated 5 pulverizers to each ore being generated, which was an incredibly expensive investment to say the least. Though to save on important tax, we are pulling the items out with ultimate logistical pipes, which all send down to an ender chest. As you can see, we are generating a lot of resources now. Those chests link up over here then where they are then imported into our system. The bulk of the items are stored in here in the Lean 2 building, where we've got storage drawers for days. So let me know what you think in the comments, and let me know if you too have accidentally built a farmhouse. Maybe we could start a club. Anyway, I also invested in a phytogenic insulator to grow sugarcane and vines. Vines are needed to make slime balls for the process of binding. So for basic technium, the only problem that we have is there's no better recipe for treated wood. We're gonna be stuck using the bottling machine. Many of them one would assume. Let me get those built and we can work out the problems with advanced technium. 10. 10 bottling machines and we're just about keeping up. But then the next bottleneck was coal coke, so I've added even more pyrolyzers. As I've mentioned before though, pyrolyzers need nether bricks and we're still not quite there yet. I've added a few multi servo presses to auto craft the plates and gears, so much more compact than the metal press that's for sure. And yeah, I had to add a second emerald reactor. This base is now very power hungry. I did have to reset up mechanism because we are going to need a bunch of atomic alloy going forward. Later we can upgrade these to factories but for that we're gonna need even more power again. But let's get to the important hexagon, the auto crafting of technium, the same way that we have done previously. We are up to 20,000 basics so far and our only limiting factor is the speed of the auto crafter. 600 advanced technium and as expected we are not producing nearly enough lava bottles. Right now we're making lava with cobblestone which is super slow but soon we're gonna swap over to netherrack which is so much more efficient, about 3 times quicker per machine. We have 0 elite technium and it looks like that we need the lead sheet metal to be a bit quicker, which should just need more multi servo presses. Also electrum gears, we just need to throw more machines at it. 256 ultimate technium, again waiting on the sheet metal so yeah we're gonna need to scale up plate production, but what I wanna work towards next is hellish technium, and oh boy is it a doozy. We need to unlock the ability to make singularities, we need refined glowstone ingots, black iron ingots which we need to unlock and each hellish technium requires 8 blocks of netherite. But the first thing that we can get ourselves is netherite scrap, which needs soul sand and nether bricks to make 6 at a time. All scrap makes 1 ancient debris and we need 36 ancient debris in order to set up an auto miner. Let's start with the compressed soul sand, which requires 8 compressed sand and 1 ultimate technium. Compressed netherrack is going to be 8 lots of 5 x compressed cobblestone and another ultimate technium but only then we can craft them backwards to uncompressed blocks and complete the quest and incredibly we still have a tiny amount left from the first exploration trip oh and we can't auto mine it yet because we still don't have the netherite so i guess we need to visit our cute little jumbo furnace and make up some nether bricks we can make 60 netherite scrap then we need to make up some basalt which is another ultimate technium and we can make 50 15 ancient debris. Oh no. Please hold. 37 debris. Let's set up yet another miner, thankfully only needing emerald support frames. Wait a minute. I forgot to tell you something important the other day. I was about to sit around and wait for debris when I remembered that hiding in my curious slot, I made the time in a bottle. We've got 49 hours of time saved at the moment, so that means no more waiting around for a while. We can use this to accelerate the tick speed of a block or machine, so it's going to perform fake actions as if it had been running for months much longer. Look at this, we can speed up the miner and suddenly we are making a whole lot of debris. Additionally, we can use the building gadget to place down the blocks. Isn't technology amazing, eh? Infant debris, very nice indeed. Hey, that rhymes. So in a spare induction smelter, we can export that debris and that'll make twice as many scrap. We'll probably set up maybe five of these making scrap. Then in another induction smelter, we need to combine that scrap with gold ingots to make our netherite. And we're out of scrap. 
Yay! But 74 netherite blocks, so that is a start. More importantly, we've unlocked netherite support frames, so now we can set up some of the higher tier auto miners, primarily the netherrack. And then we can research extended crafting, unlocking all of the lovely singularities. Black iron cost, oh my, why is this like this? Five netherite ingots to make four black iron. The black iron frame is a ton of those ingots, though I'm not really sure we're gonna need many of these at least. And the quantum compressor to make the singularity is incredibly netherite expensive. But let's craft up a ton of black iron ingots, some elite crafting tables, and an ultimate crafting table. Pop it here for now and oh that is a big boy crafter indeed. We can use it to make up one black iron frame and finally a quantum compressor. The quest also asks us for a pedestal and a crafting core, though I have no idea why. Let me know in the comments if you know why these would be needing for anything. But with that quest chapter complete, we can now move on to mob essence, which is going to be massive in terms of scale I think. So let's craft up the research papers and see what I need to do. Essence or an auto miners, who would have thought it eh? Please hold. So I've had to double up on our ancient debris miners, as my goodness we needed a lot of netherite. We've got our netherite miners down and the essence ores. We'll throw it into a pulverizer for an unexpected 1 to 5 ratio. It has been running for around an hour now while I had some lunch, but we've got almost 300,000 essence already. Now let's work on refined glowstone, a nice and easy one. We just need an osmium compressor receiving glowstone dust as a main input, and osmium ingots as the extra. That's the refined glowstone ingot which we can output to a locked drawer in front. Lastly, we just need an external storage. Now we just need the soul sand, which sadly cannot be mined. So let's head over to our pattern grid and set up an auto craft recipe. Also a compressed sand recipe because I'm too lazy to swap it to a compacting drawer. And finally a recipe to uncompress it to normal soul sand. Now it's time to cry. Technium Singularity. We need an ultimate catalyst, which goes into our compressor on the left hand slot. Each singularity Singularity cost 8 ultimate technium each and with some logistics set up we are now producing. Not for long I bet though as we really don't have that much ultimate technium. Right then, have I complained about final technium yet? We need to do 16 of this crafting recipe right here. That is a whole lot of each level of technium. I really can't think about it right now though as it really does seem a bit much don't you think? What's important is that I actually remember to put a storage downgrade in. Oh dear we're using a lot of power. 128,000 FE per tick and we generate two lots of 64,000. We're gonna need to deal with that sooner rather than later. But now it's consumed all of our ultimate technium, it is now our job to work out what the bottleneck is. Mechanism. Of course it is. In order to speed up mechanism, we need more power. Oh dear, it's a catch 22. So we're gonna need nether stars, so we need to tackle the mob essence crafting chain. We've got the basic ore essence, we need to pump it into an essence station with an essence upgrader. Yeah, I was right earlier. We are going to need a lot of these, as it really is quite slow. And the upgrader has durability, oh dear. But that gives us advanced ore essence. Eight of those gives us a block, and one block gives us one elite ore essence. Then using the converter, we need each mob essence and a ton of each mob essence to make one nether star. Okay, so things might have gotten a little out of hand, but I can explain. I think. I thought that I would be careful and conserve resources by using ultimate pipes again. What I hadn't considered is that one of the connection points here can only supply 8 machines steadily. I could have added more extraction points but I just used exporters. The exporters are cheap enough, it's the crafting cards and stack upgrades that really suck to make. The essence upgraders are cheap enough and not consumed as fast so using pipes for those is fine. But we have got quite a few of these essence stations now crafting up as much advanced or essence as possible. That ore essence is then turned into elite ore essence using another 8 essence stations. Then over here we are making the basic, advanced and elite mob essence so we should be good to progress. And here we go, one nether star. So if we pop down a resource duplicator and throw the star in, elite mob essence on the left and it makes a new nether star. Nice. So next we need to make a beacon, which is the fastest speed cap going, coming in at 10 ticks per action or 2 items per second. And it's also going to be used to make the final tier of support frame. And with that, that is the mob essence chapter complete. Nice! Okay, so let's set up the exporter for hellish technium, but we still have zero ultimate technium because we're still waiting on mechanism. 
fine. We'll upgrade our power now that we've got the nether stars. Okay, so for 16 nitro crystals, we need one nether star, two redstone blocks, and a block of blazing crystals. So let's make up some blazing crystals, set up some filters for the inserting of our ingredients, set up the filter to pull out the nitro crystals, and very slowly, that's automatically going to make them for us. I really do love laser IO for this. That should be, yes, 36 nitro generators. Let's get it to build itself in the same spot, add in the water, and we are generating 300,000 FE per tick. And we're gonna have two of these reactors, I think. I think we're good to finally upgrade our mechanism. The first way that we can do that is with speed and energy upgrade, which brings it from 20 FE to 200 FE per tick usage, but it's much quicker. The second way is with machine installers, which upgrade it all the way to ultimate machine, which can process nine items at a time. So I've got a little bit of upgrading to do, so we can start to generate enough of every resource to make some hellish technium. I'll be back in just a moment. My friends, I think it is working, albeit a little slow, but still faster than making zero. The Technium Singularity is definitely going to be our main bottleneck. Although, why am I exporting Ultimate Technium here? It's not actually needed for the final craft, silly me. Now let's toggle on auto crafting and get our Hellish Technium on the go. We are now producing Hellish Technium. Here's how we're duplicating Nether Stars. The only thing that's holding us back is scale. We need many more conveniences. Converters. There we go, three times the amount of converters for no effort at all. The new problem is that I have run out of basic ore essence, so that means that I'm going to need even more auto miners for the essence. Now before I go and do that, there is something that I keep forgetting to tell you. If you are suffering from a lot of stuttering, where you think the game is going to crash any second now, in the map you will need to chunk load the entire base. It's the only way bar putting it on a server that I have found to make this mod pack playable for me. Now after making mechanism factories, yeah we're up to nearly 20,000 atomic alloy. My friends, shall we get ready for some space travel? Yes. We'll start with the Beyond Earth research papers. Starting with a compressor, we can use this to make compressed steel. Time in the bottle to the rescue. We can use them with Hellish Technium to make the NASA workbench. Ta-da! We'll use this to build our rockets. We're also going to need some launch pads. From here, I reckon, we can now assemble a tier 1 rocket. We'll need compressed steel, four rocket fins, a steel engine, two steel tanks, and a nose cone. We are holding a rocket above our head like the lead that we are. You can go right here. Cool. Oil can be created in a magma crucible from hellish technium. Are you serious? This does not feel good. Six buckets each. I hope we don't need much oil. Then we need a fuel refinery and we can just push the oil across to it. That's then going to slowly turn into rocket fuel. Next, we need an oxygen locker and dang, we're out of hellish technium. So again, I must leave and scale up production. I... I guess I better go and do it then. And there Hobble goes, whittling thingy-ma-bobs and gizmos, and crafting up all of the things. This place that Hobble calls home is really starting to come together, so let us leave him now to do his thing. Alright, so I left things running for two days after scaling things up yet again, and I think we're in a much healthier place to keep going. We finally filled up on Hellish Technium, 64 and its buffers. Ultimate Technium is still coming in, which is a good sign that things are balanced. Elite Technium is a continuous craft, great. Advanced and Basic Technium are also continuous, but I think we already had that. Sadly, we have zero Elite Technium and zero Advanced Technium, because we've not backed up on the Ultimate yet. I went ahead and added even more ore essence and we're still only just breaking even that's how big our factory is we've got three magma crucibles making lava all max upgrades and running on netherrack looks like we may need even more lava generation too so then that's the space boots space pants oh yeah and i'm still incredibly laggy sometimes look at that lag game is frozen. My poor old PC is struggling. Space suit and space helmet. And an oxygen loader. Plonk. We just need to pump in some H2O and it'll convert to O. Don't ask me where the two H's go. There we go. This will now load up our suit with oxygen for all of our space adventures. Now let's grab a little fuel and load it into our rocket. Three buckets in total. Next we're going to craft up our first waystones. One for home and one for whatever planet that we're going to. That way we can teleport in case of emergency. Rightio, I just need to restart my Minecraft client to help clear the stuttering and I think we're going to be off to space. 
One thing that's going to help us is this dimension card for refined storage, meaning we can access our storage from anywhere. I've also crafted up the digital miner since we're going to need to look for a lot of moon rocks. Okay, and I've done some math. Looking at the end game, we need 16 final technium and each requires 8 hellish technium, so that's 128 right there. The angel rings all require 2 elite technium for each level of upgrade and we need 16 max level angel rings. That seems doable but then we take a look at the mod mastery books. We need 16 of each of these mod mastery books and some of them are pure evil, like digital storage. One book needs 8 256k storage parts, so in total we need 128 256k storage parts. Oh and the mod mastery papers for each book requires voided technium. The immersive engineering mastery requires phenolic acid and oh goody we get to do some refining. As a tell the hide? Really? Ethanol? Sure, why not throw in a fermenter? In all of these crafters, I'm slowly starting to teach my way up the recipe chains for each mod mastery item. It is a tedious process. Let me see if we can request 128 of the storage parts. No, we can't. Missing hemp and vines. Ah well, it is space time. We are looking for moonstone. 16 moonstone is equal to 1 dash nugget. 36 nuggets worth in ingots is equal to 1 moon dash ore. We need 36 moon dash ore, so altogether we need 21,000 moonstone. Hence why I'm bringing the digital miner. I'm in a rocket now. Are we ready to go to the moon? 3, 2, 1, we have liftoff. Meow. We have reached the solar system. Let's go to the sun, earth, and select the moon as our destination. Let's see if we can land this without exploding. Gently does it. We have success. We are on the moon. First things first, we need a waystone. Let's grab our rocket and let me set up some things. Digital miner online, however, it is very slow and we need like 21,000 of this moonstone. Mining two per second, that's only 10,000 seconds or two and a half hours. I'm going to pass on that and we're going to set up an auto miner. And we're going to go nuts with our time in a bottle. 44 hours left in this bottle and we have three tiers of ores to get through. Fingers crossed it lasts. 23k is more than 21k so let's grab this drawer and move it over to a spare jumbo furnace. Set this fella to extract and now we wait for it to process into this compacting drawer for easy withdrawal. While we wait let's research IM speed, let's research elevators and that's the basic and advanced research complete. Let's research the temp pad and that's elite research complete. Villager trades, applied energistics, and that's the ultimate research done except for the fluorite which requires a voided technium. And we have got 164 dash ingots, let's see we can make 41 which is more than 36, it's time to set up another auto miner. And you know what, let's be posh and use beacons as our capstones. A tier 2 rocket requires dash though, I guess I'll afk for a bit and I'll see you for launch number 2. Tier 2 rocket acquired? Meow. We'll go Sun, Mars and Mars. Let's land this nice and gently once again. We have arrived on the red planet. Now to gather at least 36 Mars stone and the digital miner sadly was kind of pointless. We could just dig in the ground and grab 36 but I'm kind of being stubborn because I went to the effort of making it. Back home we'll set up an auto miner, use our time in the bottle to get 21,000 Mars stone and work towards making a tier 3 rocket out of Ostrom ingots. Now we need to upgrade our spacesuit to netherite because the last planet on our list today is very hot. We first upgrade to copper and then we can apply the netherite upgrade. Feeling cute today, might delete later. So for what I hope is the final time, let's head off into space and go fetch the next stones to bring home. We'll head to Sun, Mercury and Mercury. Nice and gently, try not to crash. This doesn't look right. Venus stone. Oh dear, <laughs> I'm on the wrong planet. Whoopsies. Unlike Matt Damon, I brought a spare launch pad and fuel, so let's head off again and hopefully go to the right planet this time. Sun, Venus, Venus. Gently does it. Let's dig a hole and grab ourselves some Venus stone. Then we can set up an auto miner, speed it up until we get to 21,000. And if you think that I've cut out far too much content for this space travel and I've kind of sped through it too fast, I think you're kind of wrong. There really isn't that much content to explore in space currently, especially in relation to this pad. All three planets, we just need to grab 36 blocks and leave. Oh well, let's push forward. We are ready, my friends. I went ahead and wasted some resources on the tier 
full rocket because why not? We need it for the quests and it looks awesome. We've got Venus Calorite in the Jumbo Smelter making Calorite Nuggets and we have set up automation for all of the new ores. It is slow so I probably need to add more miners. 16 hours left in the time in the bottle so if we are desperate we could speed it up. Voided Technium is set up ready for the auto crafting. 8 blocks of Calorite, 8 blocks of Dash, 4 blocks of Ostrom and 4 Nether Stars each. But let's go ahead and enable the auto crafting. We're going to be able to make 22 out of I think 176 Voided Technium. And we can now make the first of many Mod Mastery Papers. My friends, we are now ready to make a start on Final Technium, the majority of which I'll be teaching refined storage how to make. Can we get 128 storage parts? Still no, but it's getting a little bit closer. Not close enough though, as we can't even request half of what we need. So I'm now going to spend the rest of my evening teaching refined storage how to make all of the Mod Mastery research papers, all of their ingredients, all of their micro ingredients. You all know how much I love me some micro crafting send help two days later it is taking a lot of time time that nobody has to afk on minecraft more phytogenic insulators were needed so i spammed them i converted all of the personal processing over to automation for refined storage we've got all of the gears taught all of the alloys that we needed one dedicated to thermal papers where each paper requires six resonant integral components madness the worst part was waiting for all of the singularities to be made eight technium each was excessive we still have zero elite technium and we are still waiting on space ores for voided technium even though i have added a ton more miners to it i taught every recipe that i could and we can request them when we need them the mechanism one was a pain to teach. Look at this mess. I've requested 16 of most of them. We're just missing the essence and the digital storage. If you're curious, we still can't request digital storage. We can get 14 though, so at least it can start working while we work on the essence one. Yep, this smelting factory is going to be very busy. Essence is going to need 320 elite mob essence. So I think it's probably wise that I start collecting those resources now. So if we have a crafter facing the chest above the auto crafter we can throw in the pattern and make a request those items end up in this chest and we can teach the recipe to the auto crafter that's one paper but i've just realized that this isn't an auto crafter that's better. Now we just teach the recipe and we can sit back and watch things auto fill in. I forgot about tech bug research which needs 16 lots of 128 tech bugs. Easy. But finally immersive engineering. Let's see if we can't build the fermenter, refinery and bottling machine. It's been a while so I'm just going to copy the manual. Fermenter done, refinery done. For this we'll need mechanical pipes connecting them together and we can export the sugarcane to the fermenter. Great the refinery is receiving ethanol so we can throw in some silver plates. Let's build the bottling machine nice and easy. We can pull out our phenolic resin and pump it into the bottler. Throw in our mastery papers and yes we are making the immersive engineering books. That was super easy and now this system is finished with. And here's the 16 tech book books. My friends we are so close to finishing. Let's export the dyes to the compressor so we can make the quantum compressed dyes and now we wait. We wait for digital storage books to finish crafting up it's a big task, but all of the automation in this pack is done. I will see you very soon, I hope. My friends, it is currently 4am for me, but I stayed up just so I could finish this tonight. My goodness, it has been a wild ride of just sitting and waiting. To be fair though, this has been such a chill mod pack compared to the ones that I've done recently. Playlist in the description if you want more of this type of content. But it has been a much needed rest from the chaos. We have the recipe for the final Technium taught, so let's again request one. Grab everything from the chest. Oh dang it, I charged the ring wirelessly. I hope it still works. Add the recipe, save it and enable auto crafting. And my friends, we have our first final Technium ingot. 15 more please system. Why? We are missing 23 ultimate technium. Right quick, 15 please, yes, go, go, go. Don't mind me, I'm just charging all of the rings real quick. That's it. It's done. Let's grab those out. Techopolis 2 has been completed to 100% completion in a single video. Every single chapter is complete. So if you did enjoy yourself, hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends on Discord or even share it on Reddit. Thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next one where we complete another mod pack in a single video. Comment below what you would like that to be.